te rere kou, tu te rangi whiu, it's from the Cawthron Institute. Is he from, hey, true, from Paripunga too? There's nothing worse, eh? everyone clever is from Ngāti Porau. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, e Ngāpuhi. So Ngāpuhi Taranaki, Ngāti Ranganui and Tainui descent, and is a mātou ranga Māori researcher at Kothron. His research has spanned kaimoana, aquaculture, aquatic animal health, biosecurity, seafood security, and he has also supported the development of a framework for research that is just and equitable for Indigenous peoples. Let's give a big round of applause to Ngāti Pro. Te karanga ki taku tīma, kia haere tahi mai I a rātou e haere mai nei te nei ka mihi ake e a Ka tā hai ngā kōrero a te kura tai aho E te matue e tame te nā koe i o reka Tērā kōrero whakateka i te matatini e rangi O reka Hei karanga ake ki tērā wāhi ngaro Kia whakaawa wa mai ngā manā ki tanga o te runga rawa Kia tere mai tau awa ki tēnei huinga i te ata nei te nā koe. O ti rā pāhia te nā koe i whāri ki ai i te karakia o Aotea i te ata nei. Hei utanga mo tēnei tira o ti rā mō ngā tira katoa te nā koe. O ti rā ngā kāhui tāngata e te whaia e teina i whakakoro wai tia te hui ki tō māramatanga i te rā nei. O ti rā... Nā ui haka ki naki i te rau a tātou nei tua kana a pelika me te hua hua ake o ngā kai mā te hinengaro i te rāne tēnei ka mihi ake ki a tātou katoa. Do I just push this button whane? Ne? Ko whakaika te moana tēnei ko tēnei te tīma e whakamā nei this is our very shy team we're going to try and bring them out of their shell a little bit uh, we've got Uncle Rangiroa, who is our Pāwhaka Wairua, he is our Ringa Raupa, uh, he is one of our uh, key uh, case study kaitiaki based in Pihama. Uh, Kelly Ratana, who you may or may not know, who is uh, a superwoman in this Rangahau space, and a superwoman up and coming. Um, te ki te ora, who's done all of our dirty work and our rangahau, so tēnā koe, tēnā koutou, anei te tīma e tātouma. We also have uh, some of our extended whānau in, in Wanganui who weren't able to make it, but who have played an integral role in this kaupapa. So you, if you like reading words, kei reira ngā kupu, but the main part I hear is when we talk about aquaculture, when we talk about cultivating in the sea, um, important from our old Māori perspective is to look at things from a whakapapa perspective. How te whakapapa o e nei mea? And so when the krauna and when the, uh, the minister came out with these three billion target dollar targets and 2035 targets, we started to think, okay, so there's already been aquaculture that have established itself in Aotearoa, but also there's this, this inkling that before those things, there were other things. So what were those other things? What are those taonga that have whakapapa to here that we can use as an anchor point for understanding aquaculture moving forward? Ne? Because we know ma te whakapapa, whakapapa makes things continuous by a definition because of the intergeneral nature of whakapapa. When you establish it from a mātāpuna, from a source point, it should flow continuously because you're intergenerational by nature. I stole that one from Whaitena. <laughs> <laughs> so, how hato na whakapapa? What is aquaculture's whakapapa in Aotearoa? Aneira. Ko 
te awa o te wai ngongoro tene, te wai ngongoro stream, he pā tuna tene. I roto i ngā tau 1800s. 1800s is, is I think we're in this. Fire Desna, awesome Fire Desna helped us acquire these pikitia, so big mihi to her. He utu piharau tene, waira pahi is whānau's wahi. But if we look at the scale of this, ne, community scale, hapu scale, e harai te mea e iti iti no, they're not small-minded thinkers. These are big ideas, grand ideas, grand purpose. So far extend beyond just tutu nei te ahua. Ne? Ano, he utu piharau, um, in similar places up the Wanganui River. Uh, he maru tēne. Yeah, this is a small model of patuna. Also found in the Taranaki and Wanganui area. This actually is still in the Wanganui Museum, if you want to go and have a look. But it just goes to show the level of detailing and scaling within our traditional technologies of our tupuna. So we thought this as a good starting point uh, for understanding aquaculture and where we can take it, but also kia Māori ai te mana, kia mana Māori ai te mahi. Uh, so to have integrity not only in te ao not only in the economics of things, but also in, in mātauranga Māori in itself. If we reach for mātauranga Māori first, then we're doing a new thing, but there's no use in having Mātauranga Māori and our kete of tools when we don't reach for it and use it. So that was the kaupapa of our, our mahi. And then one of Kelly's super, uh, superpowers is she's real friendly. So she has a lot of cool friends in Hawaii that she introduced us to, Pelika being one of them, and um, the knowledge base that they have over in Hawaii is our tuakana. So that became one of our kaupapa for our project, is how do we look at these kaupapa? How do we reinvigorate the matauranga? How do we navigate that space? And also, how do we work back to active practice-based learning? Ne? Ah. Kia, kia tika i te kōrero. Like all things, if it is to be in our Māori worldview, it must have a whakapapa to us. And it must have a whakapapa through us one of the kaupapa that I would like to bring um, Uncle Rangiro into now ne, is looking at how we look at this whole space through a Māori worldview. And also one of the kaupapa that is in our, in our project is around navigating the enablers and disablers of the space. Ne, ka huri te wā, kia koe, uncle. Paua no koe he te motu nei te ki atu hoki mai ki aha. E ara tapoko poko te ara i aere ai koe e rongo rā nei ngā toe a potoru unuhia atu ai te we o tipua koe a tangaroa unuhia. A taku karakia e, e karakia kaitiaki nō no roto nō no runga te waka o Aotea. A When asked for the boundaries of the moana from my little township of Pihama, I replied to the crown, Awaiki nui, awaiki roa, awaiki pa mama. <clears throat> when they ask me, what are the waters you work in? I say, my ancestral waters and my spiritual waters. So I'm just coming from a background of where I was brought up. As a young man, I was working amongst my elders in the area of conservation. It was a portfolio that my iwi had, Ngārua Henerang, had a portfolio called conservation. Uh, and I was 
the, the younger member of this portfolio. So those two uh, ideas that I had presented to you uh, just now have come from that base. Uh, I just want to talk about one experience in the way because I think that uh, I ha I've been sort of cut from a lot of the activity that uh, I was privileged to in years gone by. Uh, Pre-Sea Lords settlement, they took out a clause in there that said nothing in this act shall affect a Māori fishing right. Now, I was able to go down there before that little clause was taken out, down to the Moana, get me 20 powers. Oh, but the regulation says, oh, you can only take 10. Oh, hang on a sec. Have a look at that clause in the act. Yes, that's enough to protect you. Go off to court. Judge says, yeah, that's sitting there. You're right, I need all see you later. But my park our mate who's with me, oh, he gets prosecuted. I'm um, just giving you a sort of... Uh, uh, a, a little uh, story in terms of that uh, legislation. Now, if you come into the freshwater, that clause still sits in there. I think it's 26 ZH. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, some, a couple of men, gentlemen, have said that they are laymen. Yes, I am a layman. Um, but that particular clause still sits in the freshwater. So, I guess I'm drawing a picture of the arena that I'm. I find myself in now. Uh, in terms of legislation and my right to act in a manner according to how I was brought up. Uh, so uh, just getting back to the enablers and disablers, I think I'm in the uh, disablers actually at the, ma at the moment. So um, I was uh, uh, under that particular freshwater fisheries uh, clause um, I was accosted by the Conservation Department and charged for uh, having X amount of nets. I think I might have had about three or something like that. Uh, and um, uh, he charged me for uh, uh, being about 10 metres away from my net. That was another, another clause in the Act. Uh, and um, not allowing him to take my nets. Uh, so... It took about a year before we went to court. Now, my, um, the person that represented me was Maui Solomon uh, at that time. A young lawyer at the time, Maui, I'm talking about 1995, around there, and uh, Taki Anaru from Te Arawa. Those two lawyers represented me in the court. We got to the court a year later, three days before we got there, uh, our charges were withdrawn by the Conservation Department. We got there and the judge looked at the Conservation Department and says, I mean to say you've been making these fellows wait for a whole year uh, and they, just before they come to their hearing, you withdraw the charges. Yes, Your Honour. Anyway, close, ca uh, case closed. Um, Crown Law Office sends us a, a note to say, you, your charges have been withdrawn. The judge orders on the day, uh, you pay Maui, his uh, legal fees, I think it was about $11,000 at the time, that was done. I guess what I'm saying is in the fresh water, I could still go down there. I think the, um, the present uh, legislation says six eels for the recreational. But I'm not a recreational fisher person. Um, so, so I can go in there now and exceed that number, which is... Uh, I, you know, I mean, if, if, you, if you know, most people would say, well, hey, look, we're trying to conserve this. this uh, our long fin and short fin are, are shorter numbers. Of course, I've got to com com my common sense tells me, hey, yeah, uh, limit the numbers that we take. So, um, so uh, uh, yeah, sorry. So I've, this is where this is where we're sitting at the moment. Um, now, I just want to finish with, again, I'm still sitting in the disablers. My koro said to me, look, don't talk about fish. If you're going to talk about something, just stay with the water. You change, you change the water, 
Nothing, nothing can live in there if you, uh, if you pollute that water. So stay with the water, stay with the issues around that, uh, and that's where your mahi lies. So I'm on the Taranaki ring plane. We have short runs from the mountain to the moana. Uh, access, I'm dictated to when I want to go down to the moana, uh, I have to ask uh, to have that access uh, to get to those places. Um, so I think there's a lot of work, and I, I can see in terms of the conference, tomorrow may be uh, where some answers will come to a pathway uh, for legislation to set us uh, and allow us uh, to continue in the practices of our tipuna. Kachi Kia ora Uh, with our 40 seconds, I just want to draw our attention. Um, I had to change, I hope Uncle doesn't mind, but I had to change our modi just a little bit. Um, this is the starting point of some of our outputs in our mate. So, the first thing is, whakapapa. Te whakapapa o te wai. Ngā whakapapa o ngā atua. They, our source points of our modi ora. We have to plan them into our existence of now. The way doesn't see any separation, yet we manage it separated. So what we simply did is, apart from uh, an avid uh, kaitiaki and kawero ia i te kawana, e rongo ana i tera, he is also a holder of lots of our whānau mā tauranga, some of which are the connected spaces between our mata puna and our puwaha that hold the modi and the life force needed for our ika to go and populate those spaces. So understanding that is the starting point of what we need to know so we can then use patuna, so we can then use utupihara. So understanding in this context Aquaculture to us is simply a vehicle for us to cultivate. But we have to cultivate the right things first. In order for a hapu-based economy, which is another kaupapa that we're focusing on, to first flourish, we need a hapu-based ecology to start. Economies come and they plant themselves where resources or rawa are plentiful and they start selling those. But the difference here now is we have to build our rawa from scratch. And we do that with whakapapa, whakapapa atua, whakapapa tūpuna, whakapapa tāngata. Um, if you'd like to know more, haere mai ki te kōrero, huri, huri, tēnā tātou katoa.